Shunyabadi Paschacha Deshatarine Jaya Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Kadadhar Shri Vasadi Gaur Bhaktavinda Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. So we're going through the Krishna book, which is the summary study of the 10th canto Srimad Bhagavatam, describing the pastimes of Lord Krishna. So the, la the last chapter we did was about the introduction to the Rasa Leela and we heard how Lord Krishna had brought all the gopis to the forest of Vrindavan. And this was on the occasion, this was on the night of the Sarat Purnima, when the moon is very full. It's so very beautiful evening in the autumn season. So Lord Krishna was dancing with all the gopis and he saw how the gopis were becoming very proud because they were all thinking Krishna is dancing with me. So Krishna does not like to see his devotees becoming proud. So Krishna arranged by his by his inconceivable powers, he was able to disappear from the gopis. So this chapter is called Krishna Hides from the Gopis. And we're going to hear from this chapter descriptions of the, the intense love which the Gopis have for Krishna. In the material world, a woman may love a man for some time, but when the man goes, then she thinks, she will think, let him go. I don't want to be bothered with him anymore. I just want to forget about the man. So, uh, the love of the gopis is not material, it's a very, they have a very pure spiritual relationship with Lord Krishna. And all the gopis love Krishna more than anything else. So when Krishna disappeared from the company of the gopis, they began to look everywhere for him. So they couldn't find him anywhere. So they became very, they were afraid and they were almost mad 
about his, where is he where is he gone? What's happened to him? So they would think about the different pastimes which they had enjoyed with Krishna. And when they began to think about Krishna and their pastimes with him, then they they lost their memory and they, they just forgot about everything else. And they would they would even see and they would imagine that they were seeing the pastimes of Krishna with their own eyes. And they would remember how he would speak to, to them so nicely. And he would also, he would even have loving exchanges with them and bracing them and this way they would remember their dealings with Krishna. But then the gopis, they, they would begin to imitate Krishna and they would show how Krishna would dance. They would imitate Krishna's dancing. And then they would imitate how he walked and how he smiled. And they would pretend that they were Krishna, they were imitating Krishna. So this way, because Krishna had left them, they all became like mad women. And one gopi would tell the other gopi, I am Krishna. And then all the gopis would come together, they all came together and they began to chant Krishna's names very loudly. And all together as one party, they went from one forest to another, searching for Krishna. Actually, Krishna, Krishna is everywhere. He's in the sky, he's in the forest, he's in the heart, he's everywhere. So the gopis would begin to talk to the trees and to the plants. And they would ask them, did you see Krishna? Did you see which way he's gone? And there were bi there's big trees in the forest and there's little plants and the gopis would address all of them. There are big trees in the... Can you hear me? Yes, good. I lost the last one. And there are big trees and small plants in the forest and the gopis would talk to them. So the... the they would say banyan tree, 
Have you seen the son of Nanda Maharaj? Did he come this way? He has stolen our heart and he's gone away, taken our hearts with him. If you have seen him, tell us which way he went. Then they would, then the, another gopi would ask, Oh, Naga flower or Champaka flower tree, have you seen the young brother of Balaram? Did he come this way? He left us because we were so proud. So the gopis knew why Krishna had left them. They could understand that they had been too proud. They were thinking we're the most fortunate women in the universe. So Krishna left them to take away their pride. Krishna, Krishna doesn't like his devotees to be proud of their service. Krishna accepts everyone's service. Krishna accepts the service of everyone. You cannot hear me. So he doesn't like one devotee to think he's better than another devotee. And if somebody thinks like that, then Krishna will teach them a lesson. So then the gopis talk to the Tausi plant. Because Tosi is a, a female, Tosi is a woman, a, a female. The other, the trees, the big trees, they're like males. The, but the Tosi plant is a female. So she could understand more the position of the gopis. So they said to Tosi, we know Lord Krishna loves you, you very much. He always keeps your leaves on his lotus feet. And then they spoke to the other flowers like the malati flower and the jasmine flower. 
All of you, all of you must have been touched by Krishna. He passed this way. We we know he passed this way. So did you see Madhava when he came this way? And then they spoke to the fruit trees. Oh, mango trees. Oh, trees of jackfruit. Oh, pear tree. Oh, blackberries and bell trees. You are all very pious trees living on the bank of the Yamuna. Krishna must have come this way. Can you tell us which way he got he went? And then the gopis they looked on the ground and they began to talk to the earth, to the to the earth, the ground. And the gopi said, Oh, earth, earth planet, we do not know about all the austerities you have done to be so fortunate. Because we know you are living and Lord Krishna is, his lotus feet are walking upon you all the time. So you are so fortunate. And we see all we see how happy you are because all the trees and the plants they're all standing up erect. So it must have been because you're so happy being touched by Krishna. Lord Krishna must have been very pleased with you because when when you fell into the bottom of the universe, he took the form of the boar, Varaha, and picked you up. And when he picked you up, he embraced you with his arms. And you were in the water at the bottom of the universe. But he picked you up with his two tusks and brought you up and put you in position in the universe. So then the gopis, they looked and they saw there were these beautiful deer there, and they began to talk to the deer. <laughs> 
แล้วพวกอูปีก็มองไปแล้วพวกเขาเนี่ยก็จะเห็นกว้างที่สวยงาม And they said to the they said to the deer they said that Krishna who who is Lord Narayan himself must have gone this way with his companion. He must have brought his companion, the goddess of fortune, Lakshmi, with him. If he, he, because we see, he's the 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 aroma, the the smell from his garland, and is mixed with the red kumkum from the breasts of the goddess of fortune. And it's in the air. We can smell it. The gopi said, "We can smell the aroma from Krishna's garland, along with the kumkum from the breasts of the goddess of fortune." Archana. Are you there? What happened? Oh, I think my internet got problem. Good, I'm so sorry. What? I lost you. Well, I only a... heard about red kum kum. It's a big. It's a storm here. It's heavy rain, heavy wind. It may be the here the internet here. I don't know. Anyway, I was saying that the gopis said we can smell. This the the fragrance of the garland of Lord Krishna, along with the kumkum from the go from the goddess of fortune. They must have passed this way, and then maybe they they touched your bodies. That's why you're so happy. So can you tell us which way Krishna went? Krishna is the well wisher of Vrindavan. He is kind to you and to us. Krishna เนี่ยทรงเป็นผู้ปรารถนาดีของวินดาวันเพราะฉะนั้นเนี่ยทรงมีพระกรุณาต่อพวกเราแล้วก็ทุกทุกคนต่อทุกท่านแล้วก็ After he left us, he must have come to be in your company. หลังจากที่พระองค์ทรงทิ้งพวกเรามาเนี่ยท่านพระองค์เนี่ยทรงต้องมาหาพวกเธอแน่เลย We are thinking of Krishna, the younger brother of Balaram. He must have passed here with. He had one hand on the shoulder of the goddess of fortune, and on the other hand, he had a lotus flower. He, he, must, he must have been happy when you offered obeisances to him.
When you offered obeisances to him, he must have been very happy. Oh, Archana, you're not hearing, huh? Yes, Gurudev. You cannot hear. Hare Krishna. Yes, can you hear me? Now, okay, Gurudev. Okay, I'm saying the gopis said that the trees must, must that Krishna must have been very happy when everyone offered obeisances to him. So then the one gopi addressed their gopi friend. One gopi said to another gopi, Why don't you ask these creepers, these creepers which are embracing the big trees, maybe they know. Uh These creepers are embracing the big trees, just like the big trees are their husbands. And the flowers of the creepers, they were touched by the nails of Krishna. So the gopis became, they were, they became tired and they began to talk like mad women again. And all they could do was begin to imitate Krishna's pastimes. So one of the demon, one of the gopis imitated the demon Putana. And another gopi became Krishna and stuck to breast. Just like Krishna took the breast of Putana. And then another gopi became the, the cart, and another gopi lay beneath the cart and kicked her legs and broke the cart. Just, just like Krishna killed the demons, Shakatasura. Just like Krishna killed the demon, Shakatasura. Uh -huh. And one gopi imitated, uh, then one gopi became Krishna and lay down on the ground, and another gopi became the demon Trinavarta. Trinavarta is a whirlwind demon. And so that, that whirl, Trinavarta, she, she, he picks up Krishna and carries, her up into the, carries him up into the air. Uh, 
So then another time two gopis, one gopi became Krishna and the other gopi became Balaram. And all the other gopis, they became the cowherd boys. And then another gopi took the form of Bakasura. And, and another gopi became Krishna and forced Bakasura gopi to fall down. And the gopi became Vatsasura. And Vatsasura is the form of a, a cow, a calf. And, and he was also killed by Krishna. And then they would call the names of the different cows. Krishna used to call the names of all the cows and the gopis were doing that. They would imitate this. So then another time, the one gopi would get on the back of the other gopi, and another gopi, would, they, they would, in this way, they would imitate just like Krishna and the cowherd boys used to fight with each other. And then another gopi imitated Krishna picking up Govardhan Hill and she held her hand up and she called everyone, don't be afraid of the rain, come and take shelter, I will save you. Then another gopi put her feet on the head of a gopi and said, You rascal Kaliya, I will punish you. You have to leave this place. I have taken birth here on this planet to get rid of all kinds of miscreants like you. And then Krishna, another the time they imitated Krishna swallowing the forest fire. So, in this way, the gopis were feeling the absence of Krishna. But then, in some places, they found the footprints of Lord Krishna and they saw the marks on his foot. He could see the marks like the flag, the lotus flower, the trident, the thunderbolt. So they knew these are the marks of Krishna's, these are Krishna's lotus feet. So they began to follow Krishna's footprints. Then they saw another set of footprints. And they, they, they understood, they thought, oh, these are the footprints of the son of Nanda Maharaj 
and he's got somebody with him and it's a, a woman. These are the feet, footprints of a woman. So another gopi must have come here with Krishna. So this gopi must have served Krishna better than we served him. He left us, but he could not leave that gopi. He has taken that gopi along with him. So we're very sorry that gopi has gone along with Krishna. She's getting the nectar of Krishna and leaving us without Krishna. But then, but then at a certain point they saw that there were no more footprints of the gopi. There was only one set of footprints. And they understood Krishna must have picked her up to carry her. And then they saw another spot. They saw Krishna was standing on his tiptoes. Krishna, and they saw, oh, Krishna was up on his tiptoes. He was picking flowers because he wants to decorate the hair of the gopi who is with him. So Krishna sat with the gopi and he put the flowers in her hair and decorated her hair like a crown. So this, all the gopis, they could understand what was happening when they just saw the footprints. They could understand everything about the activities of Krishna with the gopi. So, of course, they understood this gopi, this, she must be Radharani, she, and she must be very proud that she is so fortunate to get so much attention from Krishna. So they must have gone into the deep forest and then the Radharani said to Krishna, Oh, I'm very tired. I can't walk any further. Can you carry me? And then Krishna would say to her, Oh, all right. You can get on my shoulder. But then, when she tried to get on Krishna's shoulder, Krishna disappeared. And then Radharani would lament that she had done the wrong thing. So 
สิ่งที่ผิด And she would lament that where have you gone? I am I am just your servant. I am just your servant. I'm sorry. I didn't please you. Please come be with me. But Krishna didn't come, and Krishna must be watching her from a faraway place, and he's enjoying seeing her lament. So the gopis came through the forest, and then they actually met Radharani, and they saw that she was alone. That Krishna had left her, and then all the gopis were they felt very sorry for her. So in the begin in the beginning, the gopis were a little envious that Krishna had taken the one gopi along with him alone. But when they found Radharani and saw that she was alone and she was crying in separation from Krishna, then they felt very sorry for her. And Radharani told the gopis how she had misbehaved with Krishna and how Krishna had left her. Because she had become proud, so Krishna wanted to take away her pride. So, so all the gopis, all the gopis became very sorry for Radharani. And together they all went deeper into the forest looking for Krishna. And finally, they didn't. They couldn't go any further. They be, they just stopped going, and they just sat, and they just thought about Krishna and imitated all of Krishna's activities and pastimes. They forgot everything about their family. They could only think of Krishna. So then they came back to the bank of the Yamuna, and they they thought that maybe Krishna would return to them. And they began to chant the glories of Lord Krishna, and they chanted his holy name. Okay, so that's the end of the chapter.
Are there any questions? Our mood should be to, to, to serve Krishna and Radharani and to follow the example of the gopis in remembering Krishna. Mm -hmm. Okay. You have to hear. You have to do more hearing and chanting. Just like you see the gopis, they're hearing and chanting, and in this way they're remembering all the pastimes of Krishna. We should always also cultivate humility. We should be humble. We shouldn't be proud. Just like the gopis, in the beginning they were a little envious of Radharani, but then they felt very sorry for Radharani. So we should be also humble and we should be sorry, we should be Friendly, keep a compassionate mood towards devotees, keep friendly relationships with devotees. If you have a passionate nature, then you'll make arguments and you'll quarrel with people and use nasty words to, with other people. That's not good. We have to understand how much we are influenced by the mode of passion and ignorance and conquer over that and come to the mode of goodness. So every devotee wants to hear these pastimes of Lord Krishna again and again. You should know them very carefully. Srila Prabhupada used to sit in his garden in the afternoon and he would have someone, someone read the Krishna book to him. He 
He liked very much to hear about Krishna. He, and he, when he would hear the book, he would say, I have not written these books. Krishna has written the book through me. Okay, there are no questions. Got one question from Shaya Madhuri. Yeah. Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj, that Ramar Panam is accept my humble obeisances. Ah, ทีนี้พี่มีความสงสัยระหว่างเหมือนกับว่าเอ่อเราคือพี่เป็นพุทธมาก่อนใช่มั้ยนักบวชอ่ะคือพระคือพี่ไม่ค่อยเข้าใจอาจารย์มันแบบว่าเหมือนกับว่ามีความแตกต่างกันยังไงเข้าใจมั้ยอยากให้มหาราชอธิบายให้ฟังหน่อยเพราะ
it's preferred that people who wear saffron, that, that they don't want to get married. And then the the the, the brahmachari they may, they may stay brahmachari all their life. Just like in in Mayapur, they have a building for the older brahmacharis, where the older brahmachari men stay. So, the, the older brahmachari men, they will be in saffron. Mm. Means that they, they don't have any family, they don't have any connection, and they may be supported by the temple. They're being supported by the temple. And the ones, we ones wearing white, they're also, they, they're also being supported by the temple, but maybe they have some more relationship with their families and maybe, they, maybe they want to change their ashram later on, they have a plan to get married. Mm. It should be the, the, the devotee should discuss with the spiritual master about what color he wants to wear. Now, if, it, if, if he wants to wear saffron, they have to get permission from the spiritual master. อ่าอย่างเงี้ยคือแบบอันเนี้ยเนี่ยคือเหมือนเราก็รู้กันอยู่ในในในหมู่ชาวว่าบรรมชาลีที่อยู่ในชุดสีส้มเนี่ยก็
And can a person wearing saffron work outside? Well, you have to consider why is he working outside? It's not very usual, it's not very common. Usually it won't happen. If he's working outside and in saffron, then he should give everything he earns, he should give it to the temple. If the, if the temple agree that he's work, he can work outside and he can give everything to the temple, everything, then it's okay. But it's not very common. It doesn't usually happen like that. คือคือพี่อ่ะมีการพูดคุยกับสาวคนหนึ่งที่บินดาวันเป็นบัมชาลีไซซีซุ่มเนี่ยคือเขาอ่ะเคยคุยกับพี่เรื่องแบบว่า
แล้วก็คอยแบบทําการศึกษาพระเวทแล้วทําการรับใช้พิจารณาอย่างเต็มรูปแบบโดยไม่คิดถึงงานอย่างอื่นใดมันคือตามหลักการแล้วนะคะต้องเป็นอย่างนั้น unless unless it may be special situation that this man knows how to make a lot of money and he may get encouraged by The managers of the temple. Okay, you go and make a lot of money and give all the money to temple. But it will be different in the c o m u n i t y It will be different. Maybe some people in the situation that say, "Okay, the temple said, 'Okay, you go and make this project for this to make money, and it will be better to make money, and it will be better to make money, and it will be better to make money." Yes, I understand Guru Maharaj, but that his project is. Um, I check uh, about the temple is not really about in r i n d a v a n temple, so I doubt about this. Then discuss with you. Yes, I agree. I also. Yes. Doubt. I also doubt. No. Yes, I I don't understand about this because um, Mang in Bud Buddhism I I understand but but. About Brahmachari in about Iskon or Sanatan, I don't understand. So I have question today. Yeah, I know. There's a difference between Buddhist monks and Hari Krishna monks. The Buddhist monks, yes. you see, once they're a monk, they never change the dress. They always wear the robe of the monk. But in Hari Krishna, sometimes we change the dress. Even sometimes to do book distribution, sometimes to go book distribution, we will change the dress. Because if we would go as a monk, nobody wants to take the book. But if we go in ordinary dress, then it's easier to give the book. Ah, okay, okay, okay. I got it. Thank you, Guru Maharaj Hari Krishna. And Prabhupada approved that for preaching, because devotee go into places like sometimes we would go to airport, sometimes we go into the train station where there's many people. And if we go as a monk, then they don't want to speak to you. But if you go in ordinary dress and you dress nice, then they will speak to you, and then it's easy to give the book. Ah, uh, okay, I understand. Yes. So that uh, is, uh, that is it, for preaching. Yes. Uh huh. It depends on objective, right? Huh? We can what? It it depend on objective objective about about it. Yes. I mean, uh, if he didn't ah uh, yeah, if he didn't wearing a s a f f r o n dress, it means it depend on objective as he doing. Uh -huh. Right. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And even sometimes okay. some devotees they are scientists, and they are very good scientists, and they have finished also. They got PhD from college. And they are going to preach to scientists. So sometimes better to go to scientists if they go in monk. Then the scientists they don't respect. But if they go in ordinary suit with shirt and tie, then they respect. Uh huh. Okay. Okay, I understand. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. We have got one more question from Vaishnavi Madhavi. Yes. คำถามของมาดินีนะคะถามว่าเราการที่เราแบบว่ารู้สึกว่ามีความภูมิใจหรือว่ามีความแบบว่ารู้สึกว่าตัวเองดีอะไรเงี้ยมันมันเป็นสิ่งที่กิชชันเนี่ยไม่ชอบแล้วตรงนี้เนี่ยเราจะทําได้ไงเพราะบางทีเนี่ยบางทีมาดินตัวเองก็รู้สึกว่าเออเราเนี่ยเป็นสาวของกิชชันก็ดีนะดีกว่าญาติญาติเราหลายๆคนอะไรอย่างเงี้ยบางทีเราจะมีความรู้สึกนี้เราจะเราตรงนี้นะมันเป็นความรู้สึกที่เกิดขึ้นกับเราตอนไหนแล้วมันไม่เหมาะสมอย่างไร Yes, uh, sometimes we think that 
we're better than other people. Even we think I'm, we're better than other devotees. So, if we are thinking that we are special, that we deserve more than what we have, then that is pride. If we think people should honor us and respect us, that is pride. We have to be careful, we have to observe how other people look at us. If other people are thinking we are being proud, then we have to be careful about it. We have to think of ourselves as insignificant in the eyes of Krishna. Of course, of course, we are, we are very insignificant in the eyes of Krishna. So, Prabhupada told many different stories about uh, even Lord Brahma was thinking, I'm coming to see Lord Krishna. And then they asked, which Brahma is it who wants to see Lord Krishna? And Brahma was surprised because he'd forgotten that there were more Brahmas than just him. And then when he went in, then he saw there were so many Brahmas with so many heads. And he was only the little four-headed Brahma. So Lord Krishna, by this pastime, made Lord Brahma very humble. Then another time Srila Prabhupada told one devotee, because there was one devotee who was a, he was a, the in charge, you know, and he was managing, looking after everything. And he was very, he was very uh, passionate and he would, you know, shout at people and like that. So Prabhupada told a story to make him very humble. Prabhupada told, he said, <laughs> Yes, Prabhupada told how, he said, this whole material world is only one-fourth compared to the spiritual sky. There, the spiritual sky is three-fourths and the material world is one-fourth. So within the material world, there's unlimited numbers of universes.
ล้วก็ในโลกวัตถุนี้เนี่ยมันมีจักรวาลที่นับไม่ถ้วน And in each universe, there's unlimited numbers of planets. And within this one, within this one planet Earth, there's one. There, within this universe, there's one tiny planet called Earth. And on this planet Earth, there's one country called USA. There's so many countries, but there's this one country, USA. And in this USA, there's many, many cities. And there's one city, Los Angeles. And in Los Angeles, there's many, many roads, many, many streets, many, many roads, and there's one street called Watsika Avenue. And in Watsika Avenue, it's a very long road. There are many houses. There's many, many people living on that street. And in that ISKCON center, there are many, many devotees. And this one devotee, you, you are thinking, you are controlling everything. So we're so insignificant. We're very insignificant. So why are we proud? What do we have to be proud of? What can we, what can we do? We can do nothing. So we have to just simply be humble and offer all respects to others. And, and don't get angry, don't get passionate, and shout and scream. Keep calm. Just remember how insignificant we are. Don't don't think don't ever think that we are the doer. We cannot do anything. We're simply instruments in the service of Krishna. So we have to be humble and surrender. And then Krishna will help us. So constant constant chanting is very important. The more we chant, the more it helps us 
to fix our mind on Krishna. When we forget Krishna, that's when we become proud. So long as we remember Krishna, we will be humble. Remember, we are just simply instruments, tiny instruments in the service of Krishna. So it's a very important, Lord Chaitanya taught us, offer all respects to others and think of ourselves lower than the straw in the street. Remember Shikshastikam, number three. Trinada P Sunichena Tarara P Saishnuna, right? One should offer one should offer all uh, be tolerant like a tree, think of oneself lower than the straw in the street, offer all respects to others and not be anxious for respect for <laughs> Then we can chant whole, the holy name nicely and more. Pride is one of the qualities of the demons. Demons are very proud. They're saying, look at me, I, look what I did. But the devotees, devotees giving all credit to Krishna. Guru and Krishna. Okay. So, if there are no more questions, we will stop here tonight. Yes, good. Thank, thank you. you very much. Nice. Thank you, Archana, for translation. Mm -hmm. And we thank all the devotees for listening. And we'll be back next week. We'll go. Thank you very much, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna. 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 Hare Krishna